G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, this is just a quick, short follow-up video to show you that, yeah, Hopecast Aluminium can definitely be good enough for doing project work, model work. For those of you who don't believe it's up to snuff, well, this is uh, the end result of machining up what I cast in one of those in those recent videos you can see what you've got you can see what it turned out like this is from previous attempt previous castings this is actually cast onto a brass liner and uh, yeah as you can see the, the Sterling engine project is coming along it's uh, it's getting close. I've just got to make up a displacer now, and yeah, not far away from hopefully running. This is a piece of bored aluminium, and you can see, you know, the saw marks and that. I have to finish that off yet, but what I'm saying is that this, being homemade, can be certainly well, 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 well good enough to do project work, model work, if it screws up, you haven't spent any money, it hasn't cost you anything, and it's the way to go. I mean, the whole thing is made out of home cast, even the, the little flame pot, you know, look at that. I mean, it's been thrown around a bit, it's got a few marks on it from getting banged around, but because this is my test... Uh, my test flame pot, but once again, home cast aluminium, yeah, it does the job, it's brilliant, you know, I mean, you know, not many marks on that, in fact, pretty pretty clean, only a bit of dirt on there, pinhole from where I drilled a hole through for an air vent, but I mean, even if we take it apart, you know, you know, how's that for quality? I mean, that's not hard, whoops, that's not hard to do. This is actually the top of a piston. I have an air compressor I used. But yeah, I mean, certainly it does the job. And anybody who doubts that it's any good, well, they really should go and get a life, quite frankly, because if you do it properly, you do what I showed you, uh, yeah, you'll get the same results that I'll get because it's not, it's not rocket science. All this is common sense. So that's where we're at. I've got to turn this meat skewer into a con rod, make a displacer, and hook it up to the flywheel. And yeah, not far off going. Not far off going at all. But will it run? <laughs> that's the million dollar question. So there you go, that's where we're at. It's uh, coming along quite nicely. It might even run, you never know. This is uh, just a hybrid out of bits and pieces. I'm a bit, wor a bit worried about the power piston. It's a bit big for this sort of size displacer. I might have to just shorten the stroke, have a really short stroke on it. We'll see. We'll just have to play around with it and see if we can get it to run. But, uh, yeah, it's all good fun. And it doesn't have to cost you much money, you know. All you have to do is be prepared to, yeah, learn something, try something. Do something. Don't just buy everything. Um, make stuff. And uh, you don't need a big expensive lathe to do this sort of work. All you need is a bit of grit and determination and uh, willing to learn. Okay, well, I want to bash you. But that's it. That's where we're at at the moment. And, yeah, it's coming along okay. So hopefully it'll run, but there's no guarantee with this stuff. Time will tell. But at least... It's lots of fun turning up this stuff. And uh, once again, if it's a waste of time, you haven't wasted money because it hasn't cost any money. That's the whole benefit of this sort of approach. Yeah, it can be really, really dirt cheap. Okay, that's it from me. See you next time. Cheers.